Hello, my name is Lawrence Gold, and I'm the developer of Somatics on the Web. I'm also a practitioner and trainer of practitioners in the field of clinical somatic education. In this video, I'm going to give you some background so that you can make a sensible assessment as to whether what's in this website can be of use to you. We'll start with a bit about my background. That would be my credentials, but also my personal history and how this particular discipline has helped me. And then we'll go into a general overview of the kinds of conditions that can be helped and the reason they can be helped. And then we'll finish with a little bit of consideration of the meaning of the word somatic, which is not the same as semantic and is not related to sleep, as in somnolescence. I'll clarify that toward the end. And we'll have an interesting look at the whole thing. And then you'll get a sense of to what degree you're interested in pursuing this course and what your reasonable expectations would be as to how quickly you can get out of pain and get back to the life you like. Okay, well, let's uh, go into my personal history a little bit so you know where I'm coming from. First thing is I, I came to the field of somatics as a client. I had sustained a fair number of injuries. Let me list them off for you here. Let's see. Uh, I got rear-ended twice and in an automobile accident. One of them totaled my car. And I had episodes of major back pain, back seizures, really. I had sciatica. Oh, I had a wrist injury, uh, which was so severe to my right hand and wrist that I couldn't hold anything in that hand. And for that injury, I went to our family doctor who diagnosed tendinitis and injected cortisone in two separate office visits and gave me a brace to wear. And it didn't do anything for me, so I ended up going to a rolfing practitioner. And that was very effective. And that's what got me started, really, in the field of somatics. Uh, during the course of my rolfing, I enjoyed the work so much I wanted more sessions sooner, and he wouldn't do it. He said I needed time to integrate changes, and I asked how could I speed that up. He said there are these exercises, and these were the first somatic exercises that I learned. They were developed at the Rolf Institute with uh, Ida Rolf and Judith Aston, who is a noted movement educator, and... Then also I uh, sustained a fall from a second-story balcony. I landed on my feet so hard on a concrete surface that bruised my heels, and I walked on my toes for about for the next six weeks. So the combination of, oh, and I also had sciatica. Sciatica was, uh, I didn't even know it was sciatica at the time. This was 1988 when I was at university taking prerequisite coursework to become a physical therapist. And uh, in driving from California State University, Fresno, to the San Francisco Bay Area, a three-hour drive, I had a feeling that felt like a quarter-inch cable underneath my thigh where it connects to the buttock. That's a sciatic nerve. And it was so bad I couldn't use that leg to... Uh, I'll push the accelerator pedal, so I had to switch my left leg over and operate both the accelerator and the brake. That uh, episode of sciatica lasted for months. I didn't know it was sciatica at the time. All I knew is that it hurt. Um, what was interesting is that when I went into training with Thomas Hanna in 1990, the afternoon that we students were practicing the method for clearing up back trouble, the students were working with each other, and I was receiving as well as administering the lessons. And that's the afternoon my sciatica disappeared. And uh, that was a durable change, namely it did not come back. It was never the same again. 
Let's see what else. Oh, yeah. And over the course of my training, I took training in massage and in Traeger psychophysical integration and craniosacral therapy. Those are the three major things I took in the somatic field. And then in 1990, I studied with Thomas Hanna and his one and only training group during his lifetime. And that gives you something of my background. What I can say is that uh, somatics, somatic exercises, and working with colleagues of mine at the early time of my practice makes huge differences for me. Each session made a large change. And actually, people who work with me in a one-on-one -on -one setting where we're using the clinical techniques report pretty much the same thing. They get very large changes during the sessions. We hardly ever have to repeat the same thing. Once in a while, I have to, but almost never. And it's generally a course of sessions, I suppose, averaging six per client, where usually people have multiple injury patterns. So this, uh, for something like back trouble, it's usually one or two sessions is sufficient for a durable change. And I recognize that may seem far-fetched given the typical track record of other methods of treating back pain, but the, there's a big difference, and the reason for the difference I explain later on in this video. But basically, it has to do with working more at the root or origin of the trouble, not working on the muscles, because the muscles only obey the nervous system. And if the nervous system has conditioning that keeps muscles tight, working the muscles doesn't change that. That's also, by the way, why stretching doesn't work very well. I'll go more into that later on in this video. Um, so you have a sense here of something of my background, uh, my credentials then, and also your expectations uh, will pretty much, I expect, be uh, similar to mine. When you're working with just somatic exercises alone, things go rather slower, but uh, people report to me that they give very good changes, and the, most of the programs last between five and nine weeks. These are self-relief programs where you're doing nothing but somatic exercises and people report very good changes. And, you know, five to nine weeks isn't a snap of the fingers, but it's also vastly shorter than most people's run of, say, physical therapy, where they're doing it even three times a week for even months or maybe more than a year on end. The somatic exercises produce definitive relief in anywhere from one week, say, for certain conditions, to, say, nine weeks. And not only that, but if uh, in the unlikely event you were to have a flare-up, you also have the means of clearing it up without having to do an office visit or pay a practitioner of any sort. So with that, let's bridge to the next topic, which is how somatics works and why it works. Now some things about the field of clinical somatic education itself. And this discipline, we deal with what are called reflexes of stress. And what that means is that under stress, we tighten up. Different kinds of stress situations provoke different kinds of tightening. And there are three general categories that this discipline addresses, and I'll explain each in brief right now. The first category is stress associated with urgency, with being driven, fast lifestyle, deadlines, urgency in general. The kind of stress that leads to headaches also leads to chronic back pain. And the neuromuscular reaction triggered by these kinds of conditions is called Landau reaction, which although it awakens at about three months of age to enable us to learn to stand and walk and its uh, reflex pattern or postural reflex that activates the posterior muscles of the spine to erect the spine. When that postural reflex becomes habituated through long-term stress periods, the muscles get tighter and tighter and never really relax. 
and the tension generates muscle fatigue, compresses the spine, leads to disc compression, disc bulges, nerve entrapments, and degenerative disc conditions, which are misnamed degenerative disc disease. It's not a disease at all. It's the long-term consequence of mechanical compression of discs due to that heightened back muscle tension. And the same reaction leads to tension headaches and is one of the elements of sciatica. The second general category has to do with anxiety and fear. The term for the postural reflex so triggered is startle reflex, and everybody has seen it or experienced it at one time or another. Uh, if you've ever been in the room when a door suddenly slammed or seen someone who reacted to a sudden noise, they go into a ducking or cringe response in which they curl forward somewhat, and in the extreme, they actually do go into an extreme crouch. If you've ever seen films of soldiers in wartime, they run in this crouch position, not just because it's safer, because frankly, how much safer are you ducking a little bit? It's actually a reflexive, self-protective postural reflex pattern, and this kind of postural reflex pattern leads to breathing difficulties, heightened heart rate, high blood pressure through changes in the blood chemistry when you don't breathe well, the increase of carbon dioxide triggers the nervous system into what's called sympathetic nervous system response, and that involves the release of adrenaline, accelerated breathing, accelerated heart rate, and general shrinking in and immobility. That's startle reflex. And the third category is called trauma reflex, and everybody's also experienced trauma reflex. If you've ever burned yourself and suddenly pulled back or stepped on something sharp and lifted your foot very quickly, <clears throat> these are momentary forms of trauma reflex. More extreme forms get triggered by injuries such as falls, whiplash injuries, automobile accidents, broken bones, and this Postural reflex triggers patterns of contraction around the site of injury and related to it to pull the injured part in or hold on to it in order to protect oneself. And all three of these postural reflex patterns in the healthy state are only momentary and they dissipate fairly quickly, but under extreme or prolonged conditions, we get habituated into these postural reflex states and they become chronic and the muscle fatigue that ensues from the long-term contraction pattern and the joint compression that ensues and the nerve entrapments that are caused by any of these postural reflexes become the daily fare of physical therapists and body workers. However, being entrenched in brain conditioning, they don't yield very well to external manipulation, which may very likely have been your experience. However, they do yield very quickly to clinical somatic education, which is a movement-based brain reconditioning technique that frees us from the grip of these postural reflexes fairly quickly, restores comfort, freedom of movement, suppleness, and generally the appearance of someone rather younger. Because, frankly, many of the signs of aging are nothing more than the patterns of contraction, of accumulated stresses, acquired over time. So the habitual postural reflex of the elderly that being stooped isn't because they're old, it's because they're tight. And the tensions that accumulate over a lifetime cause this kind of tightness. Clinical somatic education is specifically suitable for dispelling the habitual effects of injuries and stress that cause the brain conditioning, that causes muscles to contract to an, an abnormally high state of tension and create the muscle fatigue burn, the aches and pains of aging, joint compression, including that which leads to arth osteoarthritis, and nerve entrapments such as thoracic outlet syndrome, sciatica, and carpal tunnel syndrome. So that gives you a brief overview. Now, oddly, the name somatics which is derived from the ancient Greek word soma, which means living, self-aware, embodied person, 
namely people like you and like me and like everyone we know, is rendered into an adjective somatic, which means of or pertaining to the body experienced and controlled from within. However, the word somatic is similar sounding to somnolescent, or somatics is similar to somnolescence, and to semantics, and it's a common mistake people make. And let's distinguish clearly. Semantics has to do with language, and somnolescence has to do with sleep. Somatics has to do with the body experienced and controlled from within. However, there is a sense in which we can interpret those misinterpretations correctly in terms of somatics. For example, in terms of somnolescence or the notion of sleep, there's a kind of unconsciousness in that. And in a person who has become habituated into the postural reflexes of stress, the person is unaware that they're in a reflexive pattern. They may feel the pain, but rarely are people aware of how tight they are in the painful areas. And they're not aware of tightening themselves in this way. They're just aware of the pain. And so in that sense, they're asleep to the automatic activity of muscular contraction, and they only feel the pain. Now, in terms of semantics, uh, semantics, well, it would have to do with language, and language has to do with vocabulary. And there is a vocabulary of movement that each of us has acquired over a lifetime, according to the skills we've acquired. And that vocabulary gets limited or lost in the case of people who have become habituated into any one or more of the postural reflexes of stress. So they may not be able to raise their arm freely. They may not be able to swing their arm in a circle. They may not be able to bend over. Their vocabulary of movements has become curtailed. And somatic education reawakens the mind's control of movement, flexibility, and therefore improves movement health. And so the person regains the vocabulary of movements they have lost and then goes beyond merely regaining what they had to developing superior flexibility, superior agility, superior control of strength, and superior resiliency. So the person gains back their vocabulary of movement and then expands it further so they become more flexible and more versatile, and also more capable of absorbing and releasing the effects of stress. So that's all I'm going to cover in this brief video. As you get further into the website, you'll see that you can find articles on exactly your condition. And to do that, you look at the blue navigation bar at the top of the page, and when you see site map, that gives you the page that lays out what's where in the website. And in this website, there are articles both for the general public who want to clear up conditions and for professionals in the health field, including professionals in the field of clinical somatic education. There are also videos of somatic exercises and explanatory videos such as this one audio sound clips from radio interviews, and self-relief programs that you may purchase with a guarantee of results and use to get yourself free of conditions that typical therapeutic methods have been less than effective in freeing you from. So that's all for now. I'll see you inside.